in fact, was serious and real. Every major, I shouldn't say every, on the two at least that I named, I know that John McCain has been opposed to extending the arm control regime in the world. Governor. Well, first, McClellan did not say definitively that the surge principles would not work in Afghanistan, certainly accounting for different conditions in that different country, and conditions are certainly different. We have NATO allies helping us, for one, and even the geographic differences are huge. But the counterinsurgency principles also could work in Afghanistan. McClellan didn't say anything opposite of that. The counterinsurgency strategy going into Afghanistan, clearing holding, rebuilding the civil society and the infrastructure can work in Afghanistan. And um, those leaders who are over there who have also been advising George Bush on this have not said anything different but that. Senator. Well, um, our commanding general did say that. Uh, the fact of the matter is that, uh, again, I'll just put it in perspective, while Barack and I and Chuck Hagel and Dick Luger have been calling for more money to help in Afghanistan, more troops in Afghanistan. John McCain was saying two years ago, quote, the reason we don't read about Afghanistan anymore in the paper, it succeeded. Barack Obama was saying we need more troops there. Again, we spend in three weeks on combat missions in Iraq, more than we spent in the entire time we have been in Afghanistan. That will change in a Barack Obama administration. Senator, you have quite a record, this is the next question here, of being an interventionist. You have argued for intervention in Bosnia and Kosovo, initially in Iraq and Pakistan, and now in Darfur, putting U.S. troops on the ground, boots on the ground. Is this something the American public has a stomach for? Well, I think the American public has a stomach for success. And my recommendations on Bosnia, I admit I was the first one to recommend it, they saved tens of thousands of lives. And initially, John McCain opposed it along with a lot of other people. But the end result was it worked. And look what we did in Bosnia. We took Serbs, Croats, and Bosniaks, being told by everyone, I was told by everyone, that this would mean that they'd been fighting and killing each other for a thousand years, it could never work. There's a relatively stable government there now, as there is in Kosovo. With regard to Af Iraq, I indicated that it would be a mistake to go into. I gave the president the power. I voted for the power because he said he needed it not to go to war, but to keep the United States, the U UN in line, to keep sanctions on Iraq and not let them be lifted. From the, I, along with Dick Luger, before we went to war, said if we were to go to war without our allies, without the kind of support we needed, we'd be there for a decade. It cost us tens of billions of dollars. John McCain said, no, that was going to be okay. I don't have a stomach for genocide when it comes to Darfur. We can now impose a no-fly zone. It's within our capacity. We can lead NATO if we're willing to take a hard stand. We can. I've been in those camps in Chad. I've seen the suffering. Thousands and tens of thousands of people have died and are dying. We should rally the world to act, and we should demonstrate it by our own movement to provide the helicopters to get those 21,000 forces of the African Union in there now to stop this genocide. Thank you, Senator. Governor. Oh, man, it's so obvious that I'm a, a Washington outsider and uh, someone just not used to the way you guys operate because here you voted for the war and now you oppose the war. You're one who says, you know, as so many politicians do, I was for it before I was against it or vice versa. Americans are craving that straight talk and just want to know, hey, if you voted for it, tell us why you voted for it. And it was a war resolution. And you had supported John McCain's military strategies pretty adamantly until, um, until this race. And you had opposed very adamantly Barack Obama Obama's military strategy, including cutting off funding for the troops that attempt uh, all through the primary. And I watched those debates, and, and so, you know, I remember what those were all about. But as for Darfur, we can agree on that also. The support of the no-fly zone, um, making sure that all options are on the table there. Also, America is in a position to help. What I've done in my position to help as the governor of a state that's pretty rich in natural resources, we have a $40 billion in investment 
investment fund, a savings fund called the Alaska Permanent Fund. When I and others in the legislature found out that we had some millions of dollars in Sudan, we called for divestment through legislation of those dollars to make sure we weren't doing anything that would see, be seen as condoning the activities there in Darfur. That legislation hasn't passed yet, but it needs to because all of us as individuals and as humanitarians and as elected officials should do all that we can to end those atrocities in that region of the world. Is there a line that should be drawn about when we decide to go in? Absolutely. There is a line that what should be it? drawn. The line that should be drawn is whether or not we, A, first of all, have the capacity to do anything about it, number one. Number two, there are certain new lines that have to be drawn internationally. When a country engages in genocide, when a country engages in harboring people who are killing our people, terrorists, and they will do nothing about it, that, in fact, at that point, that country, in my view, and in Barack's view, forfeits their right to say, you have no right to intervene at all. The truth of the matter, though, is that let's go back to John McCain's strategy. I never supported John McCain's strategy on the war. John McCain said exactly what Dick Cheney said. Go back and look at Barack Obama's statements and mine. Go look at JoeBiden.com contemporaneously, held hearings in the summer before we went to war, saying if we went to war, we would not be greeted as liberators. We would have a fight between the Sunnis and Shias. We would be tied down for a decade. It would cost us hundreds of billions of dollars. John McCain was saying the exact opposite. John McCain was lockstep with Dick Cheney at that point about how this was going to be easy. So John McCain's strategy in this war, not just whether or not to go, the actual conduct of the war has been absolutely wrong from the outset. Governor. Um, I uh, beg to disagree with you again here on whether you supported Barack Obama or John McCain's uh, strategies. Uh, here again, you can say what you want to say a month out uh, before people are asked to, to vote on this, but um, we listen to the debates. I think tomorrow morning, you know, the pundits are going to start doing the who said what at what time, and, and we'll have proof of some of this. But again, John McCain, who knows how to win a war who's been there, and he's faced challenges, and he knows what evil is, and he knows what it takes to overcome the challenges here with our military. He knows to learn from the mistakes, from the blunders that we have seen in the war in Iraq especially. He will know how to implement the strategies, working with our commanders, though, and listening to what they have to say, taking the politics out of these war issues. He'll know how to win a war. Thank you, Governor. Probably the biggest cliche about the vice presidency is that it's a heartbeat away. Everybody's waiting to see what would happen if the worst happened. How would, you disagree on some things from your principles. You disagree on Alaska, drilling in Alaska, the National Wildlife Refuge. You disagree on surveillance law, at least you have in the past. How would a Biden administration be different from an Obama administration if that were to happen? Well, God forbid that it would ever happen. It would be a national tragedy of historic proportions if it were to happen. But if it did, I would carry out Barack Obama's policies, his policies of reinstating the middle class, making sure that they get a fair break, making sure that they have access to affordable health insurance, making sure they get serious tax breaks, making sure that we can help their children to get to college, making sure we have an energy policy that leads us in the direction of not only toward independence and a cleaner environment, but an energy policy that creates five million new jobs, a foreign policy that ends this war in Iraq, a foreign policy that goes after the one mission the American public gave the president after 9-11, to get and capture or kill bin Laden and to eliminate al-Qaeda. A policy that would in fact engage our allies in making sure that we knew we were acting on the same page and not dictating. And a policy that would reject the Bush doctrine of preemption and regime change and replace it with a doctrine of prevention and cooperation. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the biggest ticket item that we have in this election. This is the most important election you will ever, ever have voted in any of you since 1932 and where such stark differences I would follow through on Barack's policies because in essence I agree with every major initiative he is suggesting governor and heaven forbid yes that that would ever happen um, no matter how this ends up that that would 
ever happen with either party. Um, as for disagreeing with John McCain and how our administration would work, what do you expect? A team of mavericks, of course. We're not going to agree 100% on everything. And as we discuss Anwar there, at least we can agree to uh, disagree on that one. And I'm going to keep pushing him on Anwar, though. I have so appreciated that he has never asked me to check my opinions at the door. And he wants deliberative debate and healthy debate so that we can make good policy. What I would do also, if that were to ever happen, though, is to continue the good work that he is so committed to, and that's putting government back on the side of the people and get rid of.